I want to begin by asking you, sir, one of the first promises of the Congress party is this nationwide caste census, socio-economic caste census. Sir, recent assembly elections, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh. Rahul Gandhi went to the voters with the same promise the Congress party did. And was this not rejected in the Hindi heartland, in the Hindi-speaking states, given that this issue seemed to failed to get any traction just a few months ago. You think it still will work, sir? Uh, Gaurav, if you can remove some distractions that I'm getting from the uh, from the sound uh, coming from your studio, that will be a real help. But let me try and answer your question. Uh, number one, I think as far as the caste census is concerned, uh, you know, it may have been one of the issues during the assembly election, but please don't make it, you know, as as a rejection of the caste census, because when the Congress lost the elections, it didn't mean that the caste census was being rejected. Parties win or lose for multiple reasons. And I do believe that, you know, the conversation of the caste census has since only uh, thereafter, I think, escalated further. And I think the reason behind that is very straightforward. Because there is a lot of discrimination on the basis of caste. And I think it's not just the, you know, the OBCs is, includes, by the way, you know, the Dalits and the Adivasis. And we are seeing that in, in India, under Mr. Modi, there has been a very acute inequality of wealth. So, okay. have you seen social polarization? You have seen income polarization. And the data so even within even within the wealth. Congress party, you've had senior leaders, including CWC members like Anand Sharma, who've said that this is divisive, goes against what Indira Gandhi, uh, uh, you know, used to think of, what Rahul, uh, what Rajiv Gandhi used to talk of. But Rashid Kidwai Nyay Patra focuses on five pillars of justice: Yuva Nyay, Nari Nyay, Kisan Nyay, Shramik Nyay, and Hissedari Nyay. With its twenty-five guarantees under right to apprenticeship and I have, you know, with that entire list, legal guarantee for MSP, passing a constitutional amendment to raise 50% cap on reservation, looking at 2024 elections and Modi ki guarantee, your take on the Congress manifesto. Uh, thank you, Gaurav. Gaurav, unfortunately, in India, uh, elections are not fought or for that matter. Voters don't vote uh, on the basis of uh, election manifesto. You look at the BJP, there is no sign of election manifesto. Last time around, it came when actually, you know, voting had started in the first phase and then, uh, you know, their election manifesto came. So election manifestos do not have a huge bearing on, uh, on, on, on voters. Here, in the context of Congress, these 48 pages, they are quite, uh, I would say, strong, radical, revolutionary, whatever word you want to choose. But if if the Congress is to be in, in, in part of governance in 2024, it will be India Alliance. Where is the, you know, India Alliance manifesto? I uh, feel that it would have been better if, suppose, tomorrow, the DMK and Tranamul and uh, Aam Admi Party and all have very different kind of their poll manifesto, then how will it be, uh, you know, implemented if there is going to be a, a rainbow and alternative coalition government? I'm just saying purely in terms of theory. So that okay. has not been sorted out. I think it would be better if India Alliance had come up uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with the manifesto, that would have mattered a lot. The amount of things that Congress wants to undo of uh, this present regime, I think they would need a full-fledged ministry of, you know, undoing things. Because there are a lot of things that, that you know, the present day is going on okay. and Congress wants to undo. So it's a strong document. But again, one last thing from my side, poor communication. I mean, there is, you know, I saw Anand Sharma was sitting in the front row and Anand Sharma has been a very a critic, as you're, you're, you're also saying about the caste-based census. So there's not been much of deliberations within the party. So okay. unless Sanjay, the party Jai, you want to quickly within... respond? Good point. Sanjay Jai, you want to quickly respond to that point that this should have been an India Alliance manifesto and not just a Congress manifesto if it's India Alliance versus the NDA or the BJP. Well, well let me tell you, uh, it's a pertinent point, but please remember that we are all different political parties and coming together as congregating together as part of a political alliance. But, you know, end of day, you will not find whatever the, you know, the promises are as extremely dissimilar. For example... On the MSP, they're giving the uh, agreeing to the farmer request. You know, the, the scheme to give all the women one lakh a year, the oldest woman in a family one lakh a year. Or look at the fact that you are increasing the minimum wages on Mandrega to rupees 400 becomes a national minimum wage. I don't think all, all these parties in the alliance 
have a similar approach to the you know the uh, to the attitude towards welfare expenditure or towards economic growth or social justice so i think on all the principal criteria they okay. tick the box i don't think the the uh, manifestos will be different we are all campaigning at this point of time and it is important that you know, the flexibility to accommodate the interests will be done when the government is for opening of the india line fair enough so you saying in case the alliance comes, comes there will be a common purpose. minimum program sadat yadav the congress is clearly trying to woo the youth voters 10% reservation in jobs and in educational institutions for the ews bringing new right to apprenticeship act granting apprenticeship to every diploma holder or graduate below the age of 25 a lot of these promises that are being made to the urban poor urban employment program guaranteeing work especially in reconstruction renewal of urban infrastructure given that there's mass massive unemployment and you've seen the recent ilo report that said employment scenario in india is very grim does this manifesto pose a huge challenge to the bjp sir okay Gaurav, thank you yeah, yeah. Gaurav, thank you for having okay. me on your show first of all uh, all these promises made by the congress party the primary reason for these are because they know they're not coming to power and so they can just write anything and everything uh and if i have to go into the merits of what they have written that also there's no actual road map of what they are going to do just by saying that we will ensure that all private companies also in this country will give an apprenticeship and we'll give out this much money 6000 7000 a month to a graduate in this country you know rolling out a manrega scheme for graduates also uh i feel there is no road map in this how they are going to turn this into a reality even this can't be shown by the congress party because their intentions are really different they are saying that this is a nyay patra the people who ruled our country for 60 years uh they are bringing a nyay patra today that means they were doing anyay for 60 years and that is why they have to bring a nyay patra today but the in the reality is that congress party is now directionless they don't know what to say they were very vocal about ops now they have rolled back they don't know what to say about it again okay. they don't know about how things have happened in 10 years what they couldn't do in 60 years has happened in 10 years they should first react to that what they what happened in their era what was the rate of inflation what was the rate of unemployment so they should come also come now. out and answer on that as well so Because they've they reacted to a lot of what has happened in the past 10 years saying that they will undo it and i'll get sanjay jha to respond i just i just take 10 more seconds gorav go on sir so if, so yeah so once they say this that what they did in 60 years what was the status of our economy we were a fragile five economy now we are a fantastic five the lowest of inflation rates have been in the nda governments be either uh, be it either in atal bihari vajpayee government or in the uh, uh, in the current 10 years of nda rule uh, but congress party is not going to accept that i also wish to in 5 seconds make a fact check uh, rashid kidwai ji was saying that last time in 2019 bjp's manifesto came after uh, even the voting had started i would Okay, you frozen on that Adil, point. You must not be so careless when you are stating such facts on national television. Okay, But we are very. Our sankal patra is going to come out very soon. Our sankal patra will actually lay out what we are thinking for this country. We are dreaming for 2047 developed Bharat. We are taking our I'll country on that path. I'll come to the BJP we'll sankal take... patra the day it comes, sir. Today it's the Congress party. Uh, Sanjay Jha, I want to come back to you to quickly respond to this. But give me a moment as I bring in Sanjay Kumar on the point that Rashid Kidwai okay. actually raised. Do manifestos really? matter in today's day and age according to an access my india of course there's a 2019 exit poll now um, this says that only 3% of the respondents actually said that they vote on the basis of the manifesto but that was one poll what's your assessment sir uh, no leave aside the numbers uh, whether how, what percentage of people actually said in the exit poll that they vote on the manifesto but i do get a sense uh, that you know, i do get a sense gorab that manifesto is not an issue not a thing on which people vote voters hardly read the manifesto so that's not the that's not the issue on which indian voters are voting whether it is a lok sabha election or a state assembly election this is a document which is i think uh, is kept for the uh, for the record of the party what has party promised during the, at the time of election but people don't take it seriously
or people don't take manifestos seriously. Uh, parties, of course, uh, say they do, uh, journalists do, and that's why we're debating this. But Siddharth Zarabi, what would the impact actually be on the country's balance sheet? Where will the money for all of this come from? The promises that have been made, Mahalakshmi scheme uh, across the country, one lakh per year to every poor family in India, unconditional cash transfer. The Congress guarantees minimum wage, 400 rupees per day uh, uh, in par as part of Manrega. Rajasthan model of cashless insurance of 25 lakhs. Universal health care to be adopted. Fiscally prudent. Is this sustainable, sir? Well, you know, uh, frankly, with so much packed into the 2024 poll promises, which reboot, and I would say that uh, the 2024 manifesto uh, is actually the 2019 manifesto on steroids with so much added. The fact is that we have spoken to around six or seven economists, administrators, policy makers to try and get a sense of this. No one has a clear number, but I will throw two or three major numbers uh, at you, Gaurav, for okay. the benefit of our audience. Let's just take student loans, for example. Uh, the previous financial year, the outstanding student loans were 97,000 crore. Now, from a bare reading of the Manifesto promise, it says they will be waived off. Waved off. The second uh, estimate is Agnipath, and that's a subject that you understand. One estimator, ORF estimate, says that from 2022, when the scheme was introduced to 2044, the total saving on account of the uh, Agnipath scheme is 2,19,000 crore. I calculated for five years from 2024 to 2029, a five-year term. It turns out it will be a dis-saving of 25,000 crore. Free power, I'm not even getting into the uh, impact. Let's look at MSP. Swaminathan formula, and there's a dispute. Farm leaders have contested this number. The government, the central government has given us a different number in the past. One estimate says 10 uh, lakh crore. One more point before I give it back to you. Uh, just a few days ago, the center increased the minimum wage under Manrega to 289 rupees. The Congress promises 400. The budget estimate is 86,000 crore. Do your math. And I could keep going on, including the Mahalakshmi scheme, where a number would be very difficult to suggest because we don't know who will be eligible. The center's tax revenue is 35 lakh crore. Whichever way you look at it, one estimate that I heard, I'm not endorsing, is that this could cost... 15 lakh crore. Where is the money for it? Asked our states, many of which are, uh, you know, almost on the verge of bankruptcy. Sanjay Jha has his finger up. He wants to quickly respond because the BJP Sanjay Jha calls the Congress manifesto a bundle of lies, insisting that the Congress is yet to fulfill promises made earlier. Garibi Hatao promise, uh, the BJP points out, remains from the times of Indira Gandhi now to the time of Rahul Gandhi in, in, in when he, third time, uh, 2004, 14, 19, and 24, that he's choosing to lead the party. Well, let me just give you a quick answer, Gaurav. The last time the BJP came up with a manifesto, just a few days before the elections, it was full of typos. So, you know, I think they have to basically even learn how to do hygiene homework. But I can understand the anxiety and the stress after seeing this uh, manifesto of the Congress Party. And I say so very dispassionately because, you know, a lot of people that I'm hearing on your program clearly belong to the very elite, English-speaking, urban, avocado toast, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, bracket that I call them as. The truth is this. Someone mentioned about financial budgets. Let me tell the gentleman on your program that the Nirmala Sita Raman gave a tax break of 1,50,000 crores to India's corporate sector in 2019 on the promise of investment in jobs, which, by the way, nobody has seen. If anybody has seen, kindly let us know. We would like to spot it in the sky someday. That's a cumulative loss of tax revenue of 7.5 lakh crores since then. NPA right off. 14 and a half lakh crore NPA write off. Then you can see how assets of the public sector and the government have been sold at very distressed prices, which at some point will need to be investigated. Okay. So the government's capacity to tax remains. The question is does a party have the will to do it? And I think if you look at India today, Gaurav, India is unequal. India is seeing, India is seeing the rich become richer, the middle class has been pauperized. And the farmers are out on the street protesting. They have record unemployment, record unemployment. People are jobless. 
MSME sector has been destroyed, rural business haven't gone up, and the people here are worried about funding Adani. They are worried about bonds. Taking okay. And Fair capital. enough. Siddharth Yadav has his hand up. Uh, Siddharth Zarabi wants to respond to the avocado bar, but uh, uh, you know, I, I will let both respond one no, no, by I one. No, no, I just want to bring one quick point. Uh, the Congress manifesto, because we deal in facts and not voodoo nomics, says that there will be no change in taxes on the personal income tax front, which means the middle class, which bears the brunt of both GST and direct taxes, cannot expect any relief from the Congress for the five years because it's printed with very good English in the Congress manifesto that there will be no changes as far as income tax is concerned. Fair enough. Well, just S short answer I'll to that. that. I'll just, I'll just, okay. short answer I'll just to add that. to that. that. I'll just add to that and Sanjay can respond later. Sure. Okay. S Sanjay Jha Siddharth Yadav wants to make a point and he says you can respond to both uh, uh, one by one. Okay. Uh, go okay. ahead, Mr. Yadav. No, first of all, uh, Sanjay ji was talking about typos or something, but uh, we also heard from uh, Sanjay Kumar ji who was saying that people don't take manifesto seriously. I am not sure that even what Congress party sure? takes their manifesto seriously. Uh, we have seen two pictures today in the manifesto. Uh, they could not even find pictures from India. Their Western thought and Western outlook and Western mindset has made them brought uh, on page number 42 images from uh, Rahul Gandhi's second home, Thailand, and on page number 43 uh, from a river in New York, the Buffalo River. So this is the seriousness of Congress party uh, when they're uh, bringing out a manifesto for Bharat, the Bharat which is rising, the Bharat which is showing an idea of India to the entire world, the Bharat which is the entire world is looking up to. But even in Congress party's manifesto, they can't even find images from a country. Apart from that, you are making promises. What about the promises you earlier made? What about the promises you made in Karnataka? You made such promises. You tried all your freebies, but you have been in power since then. Have you made any development? What have you made? You should bring it out to the people. N number three, all the promises, the big, the you know, the, the big promises that you're making, we should also include the cut and commissions of Congress party in that. So if we are uh, uh, rolling out schemes, which is going to take the expense of 15 lakh crores, okay. five lakhs crores additionally has to be added for Congress party because we cannot forget the institutional corruption that Congress party has always believed in. We cannot forget the 10 years rule of UPA and wow. they to took out and sucked out everything that this country did, every scheme, every event that this country did. Today okay. is a different era. This is Modi's era because here is DBT. Here we are going from 10 crore bank accounts to 50 crore bank accounts. Here it is not Rajiv Gandhi's time when we say when we send one rupee, no, 15 paisa reaches. No, but the point is where are the jobs? All... Where are the jobs for the youth? Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll come to you to respond to that. But uh, quickly, Sanjay Jha, you wanted to quickly rebut both the points that were being made before I bring in Rashid yeah. Kidwai and Sanjay Kumar. Yeah, Gaurav, let me tell you, very rich of the BJP to talk of promises. Can you imagine a political party that lies to the farmers? It promised him an MSP, you know, of, which was cost plus 50%, then went to the Supreme Court and said, we want to renege that in an affidavit. They promised a doubling of farm income. And look at where, where the farmers are today. 15 lakhs in your bank account on black money. And look at the Supreme Court judges to comment on demonetization saying, and you know, last but not the least, the two crore jobs per year, which is, by the way, one of the biggest cons in parliamentary or political history. Okay. So the BJP should calm down and take a deep breath. I think where the Congress is stored in the march, and I disagree with the people who believe manifestos don't matter, because maybe it doesn't matter for them, but I think for the Aam Aadmi, for the poor Indian, for the Indian who has been ignored by Narendra Modi's government, which is why... They are nervous and running all over the country, whether it is the women, whether it is the young, whether it is the farmers, whether it is the agriculture Fair enough, labor. Sir. Ultimately, it's, it's the for the, the avocado farmers. We have to wait and see how many of those avocado farmers are also going to read uh, this manifesto. But I want to bring in Rashid Kidwai. 2019, the Congress manifesto titled Congress Will Deliver focused on agrarian crisis, it focused on unemployment, and the Congress's NIAI scheme, the minimum income guarantee scheme, 72,000 a year to the poorest of the poor. In substance, Rashid Kidwai, because that was the talked about scheme, the game changer scheme of the Congress party in 2019, and we saw the election results. Your appreciation of the 2019 manifesto, uh, you know, as Siddharth Zarabi puts it, 2024 is 2019 on steroids. Uh, I think he said 2029 or 2019. 
Yeah, the 2024 manifesto is the 2019 manifesto on steroids. Yeah, I think uh, when it comes to you know making promises, Congress has a lot of uh, uh, you know people who who make these kind of you know promises, and it has a you know kind of Mr. Ch Chitamram was heading it, and Chitamram has been a uh, uh, finance minister of the country. He has a degree of credibility among uh, a section of society. So promises are uh, are there in place. The key point, what uh, is the Congress ability to you know cross hundred Lok Sabha seats and more? And you know, stitch a coalition and then be on the driver's seat. See, the Congress has been in governance for uh, over 50 years, so it knows how to play with this whole promises, etc. I think the key point, whether it clicks or not, is a uh, you know, is a caste census thing, whether that Congress is able to uh, you know, gel it with uh, uh, India Alliance partners and find some traction in, in Bihar, in Maharashtra, and elsewhere, so that, uh, you know, Modi government is deprived of a clear majority. I think that's the real test of the Congress and India Alliance. Very interesting you should mention that, and I want to bring in Sanjay Kumar on that point. The Congress party had raised the Chokidar Chorhe campaign in 2019, making the Rafal fighter deal one of its core election issues. That poll promise crashed. Congress now promises to reopen the Rafal investigation and it's added a number of other investigations to that, whether it's the electoral bond, um, the reckless scale, uh, the, what Congress describes as reckless sale of public assets. In your appreciation, sir, is Rafal finding traction or will Agnipat find traction? Because these are very um, uh, interesting points that the Congress is raising. Uh, Gaurav, when Rafal was really an issue or many people thought that that's really an issue, it was... Uh, it was in front of the people for the first time. We have an evidence that it didn't make any impact on the voters of this country in 2019 election. I doubt that if you relaunch the same issue, if the Congress want to relaunch the same issue in 2024, voters are going to be attracted or there would be even be discussion on that. Uh, I, if, you, if I look at the manifesto carefully, I think no careful thinking has gone. It's like putting everything what you want to do. Putting Rafael, that investigation, reinvestigation of Rafael should begin. I think this is this reflects to my, in my opinion, no thinking has gone behind what should be listed in the con Congress manifesto. And this connects with what I say, said earlier. Maybe Congress people knows or politician knows that people don't take it seriously. Put in whatever you want. Oh, oh, that that's a serious comment, sir. Because Siddharth Yadav, when the Congress says it will scrap the Agnipat scheme, that it will give legal guarantee to MSP or that Rajasthan model of cashless insurance of up to 25 lakhs will be adopted as a universal healthcare scheme. National minimum wages will be 400 rupees a day. The Mahalakshmi scheme and this many, at least some analysts are saying could be a game changer for the Congress this time. 1 lakh rupees to every poor Indian family. Would this not be attractive to the voter, quite like the Ladli Behna? That tipped the scales in favor of the BJP in Madhya Pradesh. Gaurav, I'll repeat again. I know Congress party has, are, is making such tall claims because they know they're not coming to power. That is the real reason. People had given you the opportunity for 60 years. People recently gave you an opportunity in Karnataka. You made such tall claims. Are you willing to do such big reforms? Why not prove it from your track record? Why not show it that we have done it in Karnataka, we'll do it again? You cannot compare this with Ladli Behna because Ladli Behna was not a pre-poll promise. Ladli Behna was brought by a government. The expenses were made out. The, 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 uh, the government showed it. They proved it that we can do it. But Congress party, on the other hand, can only just come out and say, we will do this, we will do that. But what reality, when they had all the opportunity, they couldn't do it. Point okay. number two, the people of this country are looking for a reliable government. They're looking for people who can deliver. They're looking for Modi ki guarantee. They're looking not for promises. They're looking for delivery of those promises. And what we have delivered in the past 10 years is what is going to be trusted by the people of this country. People have seen that our country has changed like anything. Okay. Whatever we see around, they could make seven aims in 60 years, uh, I'll just uh, complete with this point. They could make seven names. Out of those seven names, six were made by Atal Bihari Vajpayee. In 10 years, Narendra Modi government has made 15 more names. That is what we can do. 10 years, lot of capital expenditure, lot of investments coming in, lot of new policies being coming in. 
no Sanjay iota Jha. of corruption that the Congress Party can point out to. What they did was only for corruption. What they did was only for their benefit. What they did was only for the Gandhi family. Okay. The country today is beyond Gandhi family. We are looking up. We are rising ahead, and we are roaring like lions in the world map. Fair enough. Sanjay Jha has a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, chuckle to uh, add to that. But uh, before I come to you, Sanjay Jha, Siddharth Zarabi, since we were on the Rafal case, is that flogging a dead horse? But what about demonetization? What about the Pegasus spyware, for example? How serious are these that these cases will be reinvestigated once and if the Congress comes to power? I, I frankly don't know whether uh, uh, there is any significant voter tra uh, traction in such issues or is this just the Congress signaling certain... Uh, you know, possible voter basis. But uh, the other point really, uh, and Gaurav, allow me, uh, the BJP itself has also been uh, doubling down on the welfare state. 11.8 lakh crore uh, over five years for the free food scheme. And that was done yes. recently. It's for five years. So it's not as if the BJP is not responding. At the state elections, we saw Madhya Pradesh being an example. So fire has been countered with fire, but the bigger issue remains. Who regard, funds it? It's uh, a taxpayer. Who will fund it? And remember, states in India already spend close to 10% of their revenue expenditure on uh, subsidies. And the pressure after a central announcement, just as uh, the center's wages scheme is uh, uh, superimposed on the states, is going to be very significant. I don't think fiscally uh, it is a good thing at all. Okay. There's another point, and this was a point that was raised by India Today's Mosmi Singh about the old pension scheme. And old pension scheme is something that's found a lot of traction, especially amongst those who work with the government. But suddenly, this scheme that may... Uh, a strong poll pitch and assembly polls, but not there in this manifesto. First, let's listen in to Mosmi Singh, and then I'm Sanjay Jha, I'm coming to you. Listen in. My question is Madam Sonia Gandhi. Ma'am, if you have a question. Rahul Ji, you have a question about the OPS, and you have a जो है झंडा बुलंद किया है तमाम सरकारें आपकी उन्होंने ओपीएस का वादा किया था चिदंबरम साहब यू हैड प्रॉमिस्ड ओपीएस एंड इन हिमाचल एंड राजस्थान यू इंप्लीमेंटेड ओपीएस बट इन द मैनिफेस्टो द ओपीएस स्कीम इज मिसिंग सो इज देयर अ रिफ्लेक्स इज देयर अ इंट्रोस्पेक्शन दैट इट्स नॉट वाइबल इकोनॉमिकली इज इट दैट इट्स नॉट मिसिंग एज सच it's very much on our minds. But please remember the developments that have taken place in the last four months. The government has appointed a committee headed by the Finance Secretary to review the NPS and the demand for OPS and to find a way in which the objectives of OPS can be financed by a funded pension scheme which means the government has come around to the point of view that while the OPS delivered benefits to the pensioners, the NPS made it sustainable. Now a committee has been appointed under the Finance Secretary, and unless we receive the report of that committee and review it, uh, it would be premature to take a stand on the OPS-NPS controversy. It's very much on our minds, and we will come out with our position once the committee's report is received. So after making the OPS or the old pension scheme a strong poll pitch ahead of assembly elections, reverting to it, uh, it in states where the Congress came to power, the party appears to have put it on the back burner when it comes to government employees in the Lok Sabha elections manifesto. You heard India Today's Mosmi Singh when she asked P. Chidambaram that question and he said that a central government appointed committee is looking into it. But Sanjay Jha, is that not a huge setback to lakhs of government employees now working under NPS but were hoping for the OPS? Well, I think Mr. Chidambaram has already articulated his point which is consistent with what should be good politics and good policy or wait for the committee's report and then take a call. But here are two points that I wish to make out of. You know, the BJP spokesperson kept 
going on and on and on. But do you know that the BJP and Mr. Modi has survived by trying to actually only extend the Congress's Manrega and the Food Security Act because they didn't have any policy oh. what they aim to reach out to India's poor and India's disadvantaged at all. They had nothing to That's, offer. That has been so answered the Congress a million times. Policy that has kept them listen. politically alive. Point number two. He said that the Congress has made promises it hasn't fulfilled. My dear friend. Karnataka and Telangana were won based on guarantees that not only really won them the election, but please go and read your numbers. Don't indulge in fake news. They are all being carried out, and you see the results in the Lok Sabha that will Which tell ones? you why. Give me five. Which ones? And my last point. My last point. Give me five. What is Modi ki guarantee? Record unemployment, farmer distress, high food inflation, destruction of investment, corruption in electoral bonds, destruction of institutions. Okay. And making India's democracy. Since I'm on the last part of this, that and is Modi ki guarantee. Fair enough. Okay, Siddharth Yadav, you want to quickly respond before I bring in Siddharth Zarabi and uh, Sanjay Kumar. Gaurav, it would have been better if uh, Sanjay ji, without you know, not resorting to rhetoric, would have actually listed out the five guarantees that they had promised in Karnataka and they're actually fulfilling. But he also knows that there's none, and that is why he can't list them out. You're but not. the reality is, the Congress Party and this entire NDA alliance is exposed in front of the people. The reality is that today the government of India is collecting the maximum tax. The government of India, despite giving relaxation in the slabs, people are uh, actually trusting the government and the maximum tax collection is happening and that is being spent on asset creation, that is being spent on the basic reforms that this uh, country is, is seeing. India's all rhetoric, all, all, all rhetoric by Sanjay ji. Okay. All rhetoric my, by Sanjay ji. My goes, question very all, specifically all was on the old pension scheme, the point budget. that Mosmi Singh you know had number. raised. So Sanjay Kumar, uh, you know, it was a promise that was made pre-elections. It helped the Congress pre-elections in states. But your take on OPS not being there in its poll manifesto. Uh, see, I, I don't know why this has not been put in by the Congress party. But my own sense is that uh, in the states where they have promised, uh, implementation, uh, when they are trying to implement it, they must have figured out that this is going to be very, very uh, difficult to implement. If you promise it across the state, if at all they come to, to power, then they would be they would find it extremely difficult to fulfill that promise. I think they want to be very, 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 very careful about that, and that is why it has not been put in in the election manifesto. Because Siddharth so, Zarabi, the last thirty seconds that I have on this part of the show is promises are made. Ultimately, it's the taxpayer who's supposed to fulfill promises made in these poll manifestos, including OPS, which is causing problems today. Uh, considering the number of people who are uh, still struggling at the bottom of the pyramid in India, and given the fact that uh, this kind of OPS scheme would be a very heavy burden on those who are not in that kind of regular government employment, I think that is the only saving grace that as far as the central manifesto is concerned, OPS seems to be uh, on the back burner. Okay, something that of course government employees uh, are very keenly looking forward to, but is there an option there? We'll track that story very closely, but that's all we have time for on the Congress manifesto this evening. To all my guests, many thanks for joining me.